Hello there, Drew Hannish Whiskey Lore, and time for another whiskey tasting, and I am doing another value whiskey. Somehow I got in this value whiskey thing. I went and stopped by the store and picked up a bunch of minis of stuff that I had never tasted before, or if I tasted it, it was before I really knew what I was tasting. And so I got myself a bottle of Canadian Club 1858. There's not a lot of people who have reviewed this whiskey as far as I can see, and I'm guessing that is because of its price point. I paid a dollar for this. So you can buy a bottle of it, a full fifth, as we call it, in the United States, for probably about $14. So it's not an expensive whiskey. You can find it everywhere. It is a Canadian blended whiskey. And as I like to do, I'm going to give a little history on some things about this name, Canadian Club. Now, if you jump on Wikipedia, you're going to see that there is a write-up that luckily somebody now finally put citation needed by a couple of the items there, which are fun lore, but I'm not sure whether these things are actually true or not. And please keep this in mind. As Abraham Lincoln once said, you can't believe everything you read on the internet. So I like to say you can't read believe everything you read on Wikipedia. And so luckily somebody has put a little note by these couple of uh, items. But basically the idea was that in 1889, this club whiskey that was made by Hiram Walker had to change its name to Canada. Big words across the top, Canada. So the people knew it came from Canada because people in Detroit were like, Look, you know, um, we don't like the fact that this Canadian whiskey is coming across the border. You moved away from our country. He was from Massachusetts originally. He was in Detroit for a while, Hiram Walker. And so this was like a revenge thing. And it ends up that Canadian Club becomes the name and it becomes wildly popular afterwards. And the word club, club whiskey, the idea behind that is that club whiskey would be something that would be elevated for a gentleman's club, or maybe the club actually requested some special whiskey from a distillery, and so it got associated with that particular club. The word club, and this is getting more into the actual history rather than into what Wikipedia has put out there, is uh, the, the club actually was a, a term that started being associated with particular whiskeys back in around 1858. There was a whiskey called Jockey Club Whiskey. Not sure whether it's associated with any particular club, but they added the name on. And this is the earliest instance I can find of a club whiskey. Now, there may have been some before that, but it's Pretty, pretty good bet that that was around the time that the idea of a, a club whiskey began because after that, or before that, there really weren't brands. I mean, you would go look at, say, Old Crow. Well, I mean, that's a name that kind of evolved. It was Crow's Whiskey. And then if you got some of Crow's Whiskey that was older, then it had been aged a little bit, then you would call it Old Crow instead of just Crow. And this was how it would be sold in newspapers, in advertisements. And so the word old all of a sudden started attaching itself. Well, club, like any fads, all of a sudden somebody comes up with Jockey Club Whiskey, and then you have Manhattan Club Whiskey, and then you get Kentucky Club Whiskey, you get Pickwick Club Whiskey. There were a lot of club whiskeys that developed over the next two decades or so. Now, Hiram Walker's Club Whiskey, the first instance I can find of it being called Hiram Walker's Club Whiskey, is in an ad that said that they had the 1883 version of the whiskey. And so this was pre change over to the Canadian club name. The first time I see the Canadian club name is actually in 1889 in Honolulu, Hawaii, of all places, where somebody is selling Walker's Canadian Club. And so 
I think Wikipedia is pretty close in terms of the timing of the switch of the name as to what prompted the name change. Hard to know. That's one of those things that I'm not going to answer in a quick little web search or digging through some newspapers. Have to get a little bit deeper into that. That's when actually having a relationship with a distillery and letting them see like me see their archives would be very, very handy. But anyway, all right, let's jump in and do a nosing and tasting on this Canadian Club 1858 blended whiskey. The original it says uh, smooth and oaky. Of course, we don't like the word smooth around here, but we'll live with it. 40% ABV on this. So lowest you can get it and still get away with calling it a whiskey. And Sometimes I like to look at the bottle just to make sure that it does say whiskey on there, and it does. So there you are. All right, let's go in and do a nosing and tasting on this. Not sure what this is made up of. There is actually a little root beer note coming in along with uh, toffee and vanilla. And when I first nosed this, I was thinking... This actually reminds me a lot of the Kentucky Tavern that I sipped yesterday. It's got some very bourbon-esque characters, uh, characteristics to it. A little baking spice. And so a lot of it coming from the barrel, it sounds like if they're putting oaky on the bottle, they are wanting to emphasize the fact that they are really trying to highlight the oak influence on this whiskey. Not bad nose. It's just, there's not a lot going on, but you know what is there is pleasant. Cheers. So I have to tell you, I wasn't expecting a lot out of this whiskey for its price point, and it's not going to blow you away. But it's actually very competent whiskey. I mean, it's got nice flavor on the palate. Leaves you with some dry rye spice, which is interesting. But prior to that, it's got the sweetness. If you're kind of not a fan of that little maple note, I'm not really getting that kind of an overly syrupy kind of a, a note on this. Um, just kind of a, a toasted toffee note coming through on that whiskey. And then, interestingly enough, on the end, there's a hazelnut note that comes really fairly heavy on the palate. So the, the flavor is lingering, and it's really more of those woody, nutty notes that are hanging through on this particular whiskey. I'm going to take a second sip here. Hmm. Caramel stands out. Like I say, that toasted note is actually kind of nice. This is just a nice sit around and sip on whiskey. I've read reviews and tried to find people writing about it. And I saw them saying things like, oh, I wouldn't use this for anything but a mixer. But honestly, it's a whiskey that I think, I wouldn't put ice in it, <laughs> honestly. I think it would dilute it too much for me, for my taste. But, um, I, you know, or if you did, just put in a one small cube in there to chill it a bit. But no, this is one of those whiskeys that I think you would drink it the way it is. If you want to get into drinking neat whiskeys, maybe this is a good starter for you to move from a bourbon into tasting this because there's a lot of bourbon-esque character to this whiskey and I think it is because maybe they are using more virgin oak in this than expected or recharring casks. I don't know what they're doing but whatever it is that wood note is coming through fairly strong on this. Hope you enjoyed this little history lesson and uh, have you had Canadian Club 1858? What do you think of it? Is there another Canadian whiskey that I should be trying? I know I have not really jumped into the Crown Royal world here too much. I've done the J.P. Weiser, and um, there are others that I want to try. Uh, I'm really impressed with the Found North. It makes me want to go deeper and see if there are some more cast strength or um, higher proof 
Canadian whiskeys that I could get into and learn more about. But enjoy your weekend, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video. Give me a like if you did. Subscribe if you want to see more of these. And until next time, cheers and slanjava.